All right, today we're going to be still dealing with our law of sines and cosines. You've worked law of sines and cosines the last couple of days. Um, we have one last type of problem to go through. It's called the ambiguous case. Um, and if we take a look at this triangle here, triangle ABC, we have little c is 8, little b is 7. We want to solve for little a here. We know angle B is 50 degrees. So if we go about solving this problem here, I want to solve for little a. Well, for us to solve for little a, we need to know big A. And we can use our law of sines then to, use, to solve for, big, or for little a. But the problem is we don't know little a, we don't know little b, so we can't use the property that the angles of the triangle add up to 180 degrees to find big A. So how do we deal with this? Well, what we do know is we know angle B and little b. And we know little c. So using our law of sines, we can set up a law of sines proportions to be able to solve for angle c. Where in our law of sines, once again, sine of angle A over little a equals sine of angle B over little b, which equals sine of angle C over little c. And what we do know is we do know angle B, little b, and little c. So we know these three values here. So if we know three of the four values in a proportion, we can solve for the fourth value. So summing in, sine of angle B, which is 50, over little b, which is 7, is equal to the sine of angle C. We don't know angle C. And I know that doesn't give us A first, but if we find angle C and we know angle B, we can then use our properties of triangles to add up to 180 to find angle A. So we have sine of angle C over 7, and we have the sine of angle C over little c, which is a value of 8. So once again, this gives us a proportion that we could solve for angle C. We'll go ahead and cross, multiply, and divide. We have 8 sine of 50 divided by 7 is equal to the sine of angle C. So click and collect that in your calculator. Find your value, 8 times the sine of 50 divided by 7. And we got our answer 0.8754 and some a bunch of change there. Now, once again, this is a KYC moment. We find this value here, 0.857 and change is equal to the sine of angle C. But to solve for angle C, what are we going to have to do to both sides? We need to get rid of the sine. So what do we do to get rid of sine? Okay, that is correct. We do the inverse sine. So we're going to take the inverse sine. Now, taking a look at your calculator, you've already done 8 sine of 50 divided by 7. It came down to 8.875, not 857. We've already done that, but how do we take the inverse sine of that value? So we're going to take the second, we're going to hit our second button, sine, that's our inverse sine like we normally do. But I want to pull down that answer from the previous slide. So I hit my second button and my negative sign, which is an ANS. 
Okay, that's your answer from the previous line. So we're going to take the inverse sine of the line before it. And we get 61.1 degrees. So the measure of angle C is 61.1 degrees. So now we take a look, we have angle 50, or angle B, which is 50, angle C, which is 61.1, what's the measure of angle A? Well, we could add those two together, subtract from 180, We have 111.1 when you add those together. We subtract from 180, so that gives us 68.9 degrees. So we have 68.9 degrees here. So what we now have is we now have we now know three all three angles and to the sides we can once again use our law of sines because now we know angle a and we want to solve for little a so we can use our first two to find little a. So go ahead and step into your first two and solve for angle little a and check your answer with somebody around you. So we still have our sine of 50 over 7, sine of 68.9 over little a, cross, multiply, and divide, and once again, check your answer with somebody around you. And hopefully we get 8.53. And if we check, just looking at our, just reassuring our properties of our triangles, 68.9 is our biggest angle, 8.53 is our biggest side. 50 is our smallest angle, 7 is our smallest side. So biggest angle goes across the biggest side, smallest angle goes across the smallest side. So what's so special about this triangle here. Well, what's special about this triangle is that we take the entire triangle here that we had, that we had initially. This is the same triangle we have here. But I'm going to give you an alternative triangle for the exact same conditions. Before, the 7 was over here. But if I would put a hinge on letter A, I put a hinge on letter A and swing it over to here. Basically, we are creating an isosceles triangle here. This an isosceles two sides are going to be congruent, which means if this is 7, this also is going to be 7. This is a second triangle for the given information. The question is, this here, this triangle here, 
Does it look the same as this? And hopefully you say no. Okay? They are not the same looking triangle. They are not congruent. Congruent triangles, you put one triangle right on top of the other and you see one. But we have two different, distinctly different triangles here. Question is, my values would change a little bit because little a looks a little smaller than my little a up here. My angle a looks a little smaller than my angle a up here. So the question is, what did we do wrong? And the answer is nothing. We did absolutely nothing wrong. Everything mathematically we did correctly up here. But where did we run into an issue? Okay, this here is a correct answer. But what we have is we have a second alternative answer. Well, if we take a look at the mathematics we did, we set up our law of signs, which is all correct. We subbed in for 50, little a, and little b, which was all correct. We cross multiplied. We get 8 times the sine of 50 divided by 7. That is correct. All that mathematically is correct is equal to the sine of angle C. So we have things done correctly. Where did we run into an issue, though? Well, where we ran into an issue is this step right here. We took the inverse sine. And we did that correct also. But we have to remember back to when we are dealing with principal values. When we are dealing with principal values, we were taking the inverse sign of a value. And when we took the inverse sign, we came down to two solutions. We had our calculator value, our principal value, which was this right here. This was our principal value. But then we came down to the second solution. Second solution, how did we get our second solution? When we took the inverse sine. Our second solution came from the principal value and its supplement. So if we take a look at 61.1, we also have to deal with what we call our supplement. So we had a 180 minus the 61.1 degrees. So we have two solutions now. We have the 61.1 degrees. And we have our selected solution, 118.9 degrees. And if we take a look at our triangle here for angle C, we moved it over here and it looks like an obtuse angle. This angle here now is 118.9 degrees. Well, if this is 50 and this is 118.9, what's that lead for angle A? Angle A, that leaves 11.1 degrees. So now we can set up our law of sines equations for a second time. We have sine of angle A, 11.1 over little a. We're still trying to find that. And then we have the sine of 50 degrees which is angle B over little b, which is a value of 7. So we can cross, multiply, and divide. Sine, uh, 7 times sine of 11.1 divided by sine of 50. And we get 1.76, which 
which is our second solution. Now if we check our triangle, our biggest side now is 8. It's across from our biggest angle, angle C. Our smallest angle is 11.1, .1, angle A. And our smallest side is 1.76, little a across. So we still have things correctly within the properties of the triangles. So back when you were in geometry, back when you were in geometry, you went through proving triangles congruent. And once again, when we talk about congruent triangles, congruent triangles is if you put one triangle right on top of the other triangle, you should see only one triangle. Well, ways of proving triangles congruent were side, side, side. That was the reason. The side, side, side postulate. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of the second triangle, then the two triangles have to be congruent. Then you have the side angle side. If two sides and the included angle, which is the angle formed by them, are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent by the side angle side postulate. Then we have the angle side angle postulate where if two angles of one side of one triangle are congruent to two angles of one in the included side of the second triangle, then the two triangles were going to be congruent by the angle side angle postulate. Then we had the angle angle side postulate. If two angles in the non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles in the non-included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent by the angle side side postulate. But as you went through the geometry world and you sat there and looked at all these letters that were going up there, ways of proving triangles congruent, I'm sure there was a comment at some point amongst you back in the student section that would say, well, how come we don't have an angle side side postulate? If you have one angle and two sides of one triangle congruent to one angle and two sides of the tri second triangle, and the angle is not included those two sides, why aren't those two triangles congruent? Why don't we have an angle side side postulate? Well, the reason why we don't have an angle side side postulate is this scenario right here. Here we have two sides in the non included angle of one triangle congruent to two sides and the non-included angle of a second triangle. Well, if these two sides and non-included angle are congruent to these two sides and non-included non angle of a second triangle, obviously these two triangles are not congruent. So that's why we don't have a side-side angle postulate. Now, this would be true, and I always maintain, I don't know if it's in the books or not, but if you would write a corollary, I would write the Gregory corollary, which is an offshoot of your postulates. If this angle was obtuse, if this angle was obtuse, then the two triangles would be congruent. But if that angle is not obtuse, then the two triangles aren't congruent. This is once again called the ambiguous case, which you have to watch out for when dealing with law signs and trying to find, calculate an angle with the law signs. What you have to worry about is, can it be the supplement? When using the law of cosines, 
I know it takes a couple extra steps to find the measure of an angle using law of cosines. But when using law of cosines, your angle will come out correctly every time. But when losing, using law of sines, you're not always going to get a correct angle because it could be the principal value, which we found up here, or it could be the supplement, which is here. Now, how you could test that is you could test, does my biggest side go across my biggest angle? That's one way of testing it. Always check, does my biggest side go across my biggest angle? Um, you just have to be careful. When trying to find, this is me personally, when trying to, and I suggest this to you, if you're given all three sides of a triangle, which you'll be given today, when you're given all three sides of the triangle, you're going to have to you're going to have to use law of cosines at least once. Now what I suggest that you do is this value out here, make this your biggest side. Because this, if this is the biggest side, the obtuse angle could be only across in that biggest side because a triangle will not have two obtuse angles. Okay, so use your biggest side to begin with. I always just, that's the thing I look at. What's my biggest side? I'm going to find that angle first. Then I can use my law of signs for the rest of them. Because if that's if my biggest side is not the obtuse angle, the other angles aren't going to be obtuse angle either. And I can use my law of signs, which is a little bit easier to work with. All right, your homework is on the back, page 239, 3 to 27, multiples of 3. Okay, um, it says solve the triangles. When you say, when it's asking you just to solve the triangles, what you're doing is you're trying to find the rest of the sides. Okay, for the odds which are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, uh, 18, 21, and 27. For the odds, calculate your area. For the odd answers, calculate your area. All right. The rest of the time is yours to be able to complete this. Uh, this week, the rest of the week, if you see on the backboard, I have a worksheet, I have any class time, we'll look the quizzes up on Friday. QED, I is done.